the T-14 Armata tank. Ever since they rolled inexorably across no man's land in the First World War, tanks have played an integral part in warfare. Seeking to update the aging Cold War designs, Russia has created the next generation of tanks, hoping to bring its armored force into the modern world. While Western nations will continue using upgraded versions of tanks already in use, such as the American M1 Abrams or the German Leopard series, the Russian military is creating a new platform from scratch. The limitations of Russian armor were demonstrated during the Chechen War during the first decade of the century. In that conflict, scores of main battle tanks were lost, especially in the close quarter fighting of urban environments. In 2011, the Russian military began development of a new main battle tank to replace the outdated T-72, T-80, and T-90 that have been the backbone of their armored force for decades. The process was shrouded in secrecy, only being revealed to Russian military officials in 2013 and unveiled to the public at a military parade in 2015. Manufactured by the Russian defense company Ural Vogonzovod, the T-14 has not been produced in significant quantities, with only a handful having been manufactured since the first prototype was unveiled. There are conflicting reports as to the cause of the delays, ranging from technical issues with components to funding cuts to the results of sanctions placed on Russia over its actions in Ukraine. In spite of its limited production run, the T-14 has many innovative features that set it apart from its predecessors. The chassis of the vehicle is modular, being able to be configured as a tank, an infantry fighting vehicle, or as an armored personnel carrier, among other designs. This will make logistics easier, as all of Russia's armored forces would be able to utilize the same spares and replacement parts for a multitude of roles. Such a modular, universal platform is not a new idea, but the concept has fallen out of favor in most countries. Due to the secretive nature of the project, details are limited about the specifications of the T-14, but what information is available gives a good look at the nature of the next generation of Russian tanks. When configured as a main battle tank, the T-14 measures in at 8.7 meters in hull length, not including the main cannon, a width of 3.82 meters and a height of 3.28 meters. It weighs in at 55 tons, making it much heavier than the T-72 or the T-90 it's replacing. The T-14 is divided into three separate sections, the armored crew compartment, the turret, and a space for the engine. The most innovative feature of the tank is the turret, which is unmanned, but is instead remote controlled by the gunner, who is safely ensconced in the armored crew compartment. The main cannon is fed by an autoloader rather than by hand, cutting back on crew requirements and mitigating potential loss of life. The unmanned turret also takes up less space, giving the tank a lower profile than manned counterparts, increasing survivability. The turret also utilizes an electric traversing mechanism, which is lighter and more reliable than the older hydraulic system for rotating the turret. It can also turn faster, enabling the main cannon to swivel to engage a target more effectively. Unlike most Western main battle tanks, which have a crew of four, the T-14 is crewed by only three, a driver slash mechanic, a gunner, and a commander, who are seated in the front of the vehicle, shielded from the fuel tank, the ammunition storage, and the engine. This compartment can be accessed by three hatches, two on top and one underneath, the only access into and out of the vehicle. The turret has no external access, limiting entry points for the enemy to take advantage of. The crew compartment, known as a cocoon by the designers, is protected by a composite material and shielded by multiple layers of armor from the rest of the tank, able to keep its occupants alive in spite of significant damage to other sections of the vehicle, including the engine or munition stored in the turret. This component is also shielded against nuclear, chemical, and biological attacks as well, and it also has an automatic fire suppression system. The hull is protected in a similar way, consisting of a combination of steel and ceramics up to 1400 millimeters thick and able to withstand ATGM projectiles up to 150 millimeters in caliber and APFSDS up to 120 millimeters in caliber. It's reported that the T-14 can resist a direct hit from an RPG, utilizing reactive armor at the front and sides of the vehicle. Reactive armor consists of an explosive charge sandwiched between ceramic plates which detonate on impact with a shell or missile, diverting or breaking up the projectile. This type of armor is especially effective against anti-armor shape charges. 
The rear is protected by simple slat armor designed to endure punishment from a myriad of anti-tank weapons. Russian officials also claim that it can withstand a direct hit from American-made Javelin anti-tank missiles, but this is unconfirmed. In order to avoid detection, the T-14 is coated in a radar-deflecting paint, reducing its radar signature. Heat-generating components are buried deep within the hull of the vehicle, reducing its signature on thermal scopes. Though modern heat detection devices are sensitive enough to notice even slight variations in heat, limiting this feature's effectiveness. The Armata also reportedly possesses a series of more active defenses. These include the state-of-the-art Afghanit protection system, which can detect incoming projectiles traveling up to Mach 5 in speed. Once detected, the incoming ordnance could either be jammed or misdirected using a soft kill system or outright destroyed by munitions deployed from a hard kill device. The main armament of the T-14 is a 125mm smoothbore cannon, though due to its modular design this can be switched out in favor of a much larger and more powerful 152mm gun. These can fire both conventional shells as well as state-of-the-art laser-guided munitions with enough storage space for 45 rounds. The main gun is supplemented by a 12.7mm cord machine gun and a coaxial 7.62 by 54mm Pechenyeg machine gun. There are also some reports that these can be swapped out for a Shipanov 30mm auto cannon, though these cannot be confirmed. The crew of the Armata observe the outside world through a series of external wide-angle cameras, which give a 360-degree view of the surrounding battlefield. The cameras are all-weather, being able to use infrared, heat detection, and night vision technology, allowing the T-14 to operate in all visual conditions. The cameras can be zoomed in as necessary to help detect and target adversaries or locate potential threats. Unlike its earlier predecessors, the T-14 is propelled on seven dual-rubber-tired road wheels, as opposed to six, representing a break with classic Soviet design. It has a reported top speed of 90 kilometers per hour, or 56 miles an hour, and a range of 500 kilometers, or 310 miles, on its internal fuel tank, though this range can be extended with an additional external fuel tank. The power plant of the Armada is an 1100 kilowatt diesel double turbocharged engine capable of generating 1200 horsepower, though there are reports that the later variants have a more powerful 1500 horsepower engine. This is coupled with an 8-speed automatic transmission, which is electric, reducing weight. The engine can be revved to over 2000 horsepower in case of emergency, but this reduces its service life. Not all of the features of the T-14 are as glamorous as armor and weaponry. In order to accommodate the bodily needs of the crew, an internal lavatory is built into each vehicle. This allows the crew to relieve themselves without being forced to leave the protection of the vehicle. This is another way the Armata emphasizes the survivability of the crew, as they can remain shielded inside the tank for longer stretches of time compared to their adversaries. When the Armata project was announced, plans were drawn up to produce 2,300 of the new vehicles by 2025, at a cost of around $4 million each. Instead, due to the complexity of the tank, as well as its manufacturing process, only 132 have been delivered by 2020, and a further 20 in 2021. The cost of the Armata is also greater than expected at around $5.7 million per vehicle, much more expensive than previously planned, and almost three times the cost of an upgraded T-72. This has been the source of controversy within the Russian government, whether to focus on production on the newer but more expensive Armata, or continue manufacturing the outdated but significantly cheaper T-72s, T-80s, and T-90s. So far, there have been no indications of the T-14s that have been produced being used in combat. A post on social media by a Russian television presenter has indicated the presence of Armatas in the rear echelon areas in Ukraine. It's been reported that this force would soon be heading toward the Donbass region to support Russian operations there, though this can't be confirmed. Tanks, they've been in use for over a century, from clunky metal boxes trudging between the trenches to the newest main battle tanks, equipped with the latest modern technology. If reports are true, the T-14 Armata potentially represents the next phase in evolution for armored forces.